Hello, welcome to Algorithms. Today we are going to discuss about historical timeline of student retention strategies. The reason we wanted to include this video in the series so that you have an understanding uh, of complete landscape just like we read history to understand the past and then we calibrate present and then we design for the future. Similarly, in order to have the right uh, student retention uh, strategies or to reduce the dropout rates, it is very important to have a, a good understanding of what has happened in the past, who has contributed, which decade is uh, is labeled as what type of era. So now prior to 1930s, uh, it was more of an institutional survival era. It was not about the students, it was about the institution survival. 1930s to 1970s, uh, institutes focused on social engagement. A lot of students or kids coming from affluent families, so they wanted to socially engage with the people uh, and students, and they wanted to create a social engagement uh, framework uh, so that they can uh, admit more students uh, in, in their universities for higher education. 1970s to 1980, student retention became one of the challenge but it was not the similar challenge the way we see it in 2019 or 2020 but it was since the challenges were different we are not going to discuss those challenges we just want to give you an idea that how it looked like how they labeled that era and so on and so forth 1980s to 1990s student enrollment uh, was uh, one of the focus area where we focused on student enrollment processes and how it looks like they put together a lot of processes and then they started improving on that 1990 to 1999 student diversity okay we are talking about domestic student let's uh, what about uh, international student how do we bring them uh, in our country uh, to provide the right education or to help them achieve their goals that was the focus 2000 to 2009 student advising era what do we mean by student advising era so consulting was one of the core uh, uh, topic that how do we provide right consultation to different student groups or to each student so they set the right direction uh, for their career and whatever goals they want to achieve or the commitments they have, uh, they should be able to do that. They should not drop out because of uh, certain things or certain belief system that they have in their mind and that results into uh, a certain behaviors and that results into uh, a decision and the decision is, okay, we don't want to continue. Then 2010 to present, it's more of an integrated strategies era. Integrated strategies, so there were different models uh, that belongs to different aspect of student retention and student attrition. What they decided, okay, let's have a look at uh, these different models and take some goodness from each model and then create a better one uh, which actually focuses on what we are looking at in this decade. It's not that what has happened in 1930s or 1970s or 80s is not useful or completely meaningless. So things have evolved over the period of time and, uh, and, and that's how uh, process works, that's how technology works. It's all about the evolution from stage one to stage two to stage three to stage four and now with the integrated strategies era uh, what has happened there are two different types of strategies one is called a student attrition model which constitutes uh, two different longitudinal aspects one is uh, the focus on commitment and the second is focus on academics and then there is another model which is a student integrated model which a lot of uh, universities are calling as SIM. So there are five different areas and we will discuss about all those five areas in our next videos that what are the five different sections and what is the focus area of each section and how that conceptual frameworks look like. We will cover all of those points in our future videos as well. So I hope uh, you got some understanding of how uh, this topic of student retention has evolved over the period of time and uh, so far we have not uh, 
covered any topics on technology, automation, AI, and uh, and, uh, and and other uh, software products. We are not going to discuss that until we reach to a point where we marry process and technology to create the right outcomes. That's very important. Without understanding of the whole framework, it's it's meaningless to introduce technology. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to choose this format. So those who are uh, from technology field, uh, I would suggest them to keep watching these videos because at some point of time we will introduce, okay, what are the best tools you need to use for this specific process? What are the best processes? What are the best methods that you can use? And there is no one best process. There is no one best method. There is no one best tool. So it is more of uh, different ingredients put together uh, to create a magnum. I hope you liked the video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have not subscribed already, please subscribe our channel so that you receive uh, latest videos. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.